Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is the start of a new series about saving data in Unity. I'm putting a little bit of an asterisk next to the term series because this isn't the sort of series where you have to watch every video in order to understand what's going on. Rather, it's kind of a set of individual videos, but they all have this common theme of ways to save data from Unity. So when you first start using Unity, chances are you're saving your levels as scenes, you're going to be storing game objects as prefabs, and you can save initial values into your variables in your classes. However, what happens when you get to dozens or hundreds of levels in your game and you don't want to be saving them all as individual scenes? Or you might have a long list of stats or items or enemies you need to keep track of, and again, you don't want you know, a long list of prefabs that you have to comb through every time you're looking for a particular enemy that you want to change. Lastly, um, and this is the really important one, is what happens when you want to save your player's progress in your game? You can't really do that by um, saving numbers to a class because the, your, your program won't remember those. You need a file to do that. When you have a file and you need to store stuff in that file, that's what's called serialization. The Microsoft Developers Network classifies serialization as the process of converting an object into a stream of bytes in order to store that object or transmit it to memory, a database, or a file. So really, basically, you're taking your game information, which is chances are stored in a game object or a component or a scene or a prefab, and you're going to be saving that data into a file that can later be opened and reused. There's really two main uses for this. The first is storing data to be used in gameplay. This is really the development side of your game. When you're creating these levels, you're creating these items, these enemies, etc., etc., you can store that information into a file for your game to later take out of that file and use. Secondly, you can be storing player data as a result of gameplay, meaning say your player sets certain settings, they want the music at a certain volume, they want their resolution to be this or their quality, their graphics quality to be this certain level. Likewise, when they actually play their game and they reach, you know, level 20, they've defeated a certain boss, they've gotten a certain item, storing that sort of information into a file is how you really have to um, save their game state so that they can later turn on the game again and resume where they left off. We're going to be covering four ways to save data. First is player prefs, which is a kind of a built-in Unity solution for saving data. It's very easy to use, however, it's also a little bit limited, and we'll get into that in that video. Second are scriptable objects. These are really good for the dev side of um, storing data, um, and they actually work right within Unity. However, they do require a little bit more coding. Next, I'm going to talk about databases, and I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of using XML, because it's um, kind of a convenient in a couple of ways, it's very easy when you're looking at it, when you're looking at an XML file to understand what's going on. Likewise, you don't have to set up like a MySQL database or anything like that. You can just create the file and the file works. And also it's really useful for if you're doing um, games with uh, web players because you're already gonna be in HTML on that. So you can just store this XML file right alongside all that. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about custom data files, which are the most versatile of these. And they're also in a lot of cases, the most secure. However, they do require the most back-end work because you're basically creating a file from scratch and deciding how it's going to work and what it's going to store. So, like I said, kind of pro and con there. Very useful, but that's the one that requires the most legwork on your part. So, last bit of information about this series. This is going to be really a practical series. I am still learning a lot about programming myself, and so I'm not going to be diving a lot into the computer science or why saving a file in this certain way works the way it does. What I am going to tell you, though, is how it's worked and why it, like, what works for me so that hopefully it can help and work for you. Um, I'm hoping to have these videos coming out roughly once a week, um, and I'll hopefully see you guys in a future video. Thanks for watching.